everybody. This is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. And tonight we're live in New York City. Uh, I've been out a lot lately. <clears throat> I've been pretty busy. I have hurt my back. I've been going through a lot of uh, therapy with chiropractor and all that great stuff. And, and I just haven't had a lot of time to do videos. But I thought I would do a live stream tonight because I'm in the hotel and I figured I would take some time to uh, talk to you a little bit about mistaken identity. Um, first, I'll start with a story. About a year ago, I had done a bed bug job. It was a heavily infested bed bug job. And I was actually concerned I may have brought bed bugs home with me. And my wife, who is allergic to everything, uh, started getting little bites on her arms, and we found casings on our uh, box spring. So I went into the bedroom, and I flipped the mattress in the box spring, and we found casings on the box spring, and we knew that we had something in the bed. And I thought that it was bed bugs. And for about a week, two, two or three days, I was paranoid that we had infested our uh, house with bed bugs by accident. You know, because I'm an exterminator and I go in people's homes and I, you know, there's always a possibility I could bring them home with me. So I, like I said, turned my house upside down. And finally, towards the end of the weekend, I actually found a, uh, a live carpet beetle. And I started looking into it, and apparently carpet beetles, and this is something that I learned because of this experience, because I, I mean, I know what carpet beetles are. I've dealt with carpet beetles a lot, where people will call you and they'll get into things, and, and uh, <clears throat> they really are a nuisance. And so I had uh, carpet beetles everywhere, and I looked into them, and apparently they can cause allergic reactions when they crawl over your skin you can get them uh, and they will leave little, it's not bites, they don't actually bite you, but the hairs on their body uh, contain a mild venom that can actually cause you to have allergic reactions and it would look like bug bites on your arms and your legs, the places that they may crawl when you're asleep, when they're coming. I have been behind exterminators who have falsely identified carpet beetles as bed bugs. I almost did it myself. So you need to realize that not always do you have bed bugs. I'll tell you what happened to us as well. I have a bad problem with ants in my house. Now I'm gonna tell you all these bug problems that the exterminator's got in his own house just to make me sound awful, like the plumber with a leaky faucet. But, uh, when it comes to ants, if you get ants in your house, especially acrobat and uh, odorous house ants, they're really bad for biting you. Uh, I have a window right next to my bed. Of course, in my bedroom, most bedrooms do have windows. Um, the ants like to crawl in that window from time to time. I didn't notice they were crawling in the window. But when I sleep, hey, B, when I sleep with my arm up over my head like this next to the window, the ants like to crawl up over my arm and they like to bite me in the middle of the night when I'm asleep. I don't feel it because I'm asleep. And they can also lead to mistaken identity where you might think you have bed bugs and you really have ants. I have had people call me swearing that they have bed bugs because you know they're on the news. Uh, people talk about them on the radio. Uh, they're in your news feed on Facebook they're online all you know it seems like you're bombarded with this you know because they are bad you know a lot of people do get them they are around everywhere um but bed bugs are are not you know if you can't find them you can't see them but you know you have you know an ant problem or you know you have like i said carpet beetles or something you know a lot of people don't realize what carpet beetles are but carpet beetles and ants and things like that that may crawl in and actually bite you, um, you know, that may be what you've got. You may not have carpet beetles at all. You may have fleas. 
Um, I'm, I'm sorry, not carpet beetles, but bed bugs. You may have fleas instead of bed bugs. Uh, fleas, of course, most people know what fleas look like, but they're really tiny and they're hard to see and they bite you and they jump off. And you won't see them. You know, you may not see fleas at all. You may have fleas for a few weeks before you even notice a single flea on you. And you don't have to have pets to have fleas either. You can pick up fleas from your yard. Uh, deer get fleas, mice get fleas, uh, you know, rats, rodents, squirrels, rabbits, possums, you know, skunks, all kinds of animals will get fleas. And those animals will traipse through your yard and drop fleas off in your yard along with ticks and other kind of parasites. So you can have ticks, I mean, you can have ticks and fleas in your house and never, you know, you don't have a dog, you don't have a cat, and you're wondering, well, what are these things biting me when, and you could be thinking, well, it must be bed bugs, but it might actually be fleas, even though you don't have pets. You wouldn't think, oh, it's fleas, you know, because you don't have any pets. So that's what I wanted to kind of talk about tonight. I had a, uh, I actually had a customer that had fleas, not fleas, that had ants. And the ants were getting in under the bed of the kids, the kids' bedroom that had like a little soda can underneath the bed. It was the one that they had already drank, like when they're playing Xbox or something. And it was an empty soda can in the bottom underneath the bed next to the bed leg. And the ants were coming in and getting into the soda can and they were coming up on the bed and they were biting the kids when they were asleep at night. So uh, they were concerned they might have bed bugs. And when I went in there and looked, they were actually ants on the bed leg. And I knew that, and I treated for the ants, the bug, bugs quit biting them. So, because the ants died, you know, and that's an easy fix. You know, most people can come in and treat for ants. Uh, you know, typically, you know, $100 or maybe less than $200. I mean, I don't know. It depends on where you live, on what kind of initial treatment you would do for ants or what they would actually do for ants, on what they would charge you. But it's a lot less expensive than bed bugs, and there's nowhere near the amount of uh, labor involved if, you know, you're trying to get to the bed bugs, whether it's a heat treatment or a liquid treatment. It's nowhere near the kind of labor you need to do. So hopefully this will help you uh, understand that it's very easy to mistake uh, you know other bug bites for bed bug bites and I've had a lot of people that have told me you know I've had bites I've had bugs biting me off and on for years and I can never find them I never see them I don't have blood spots on the mattress I don't have any you know poop you know they, they leave those little smears like little black smears on the sides of your uh, uh, and there's my phone dinging at me for somebody's gonna call me on Twitter. But uh, those little black smears on your box springs and your mattresses. If you don't have those and you've been been bit for months, more than likely you don't have bed bugs. You might have something else. Um, like I said, ants or fleas or uh, like I said, just an outbreak of carpet beetles, some kind of reaction you're having to something getting up in the bed that or it could be your laundry detergent. You know, you could be breaking out from your laundry detergent. And, uh, cause people do, you know, I break out from Tide. I can't have Tide. Um, you know, it could be that you've developed an allergy to something that you never had an allergy to before. So I hope that this will help you guys. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm here to answer questions. I'm on my vacation, but I'm actually, uh, getting ready to leave. I'm going out of town tomorrow going on a cruise with my wife it's our anniversary and uh we're going to be gone for a week i won't be able to upload any videos at all and so i thought i would grab the laptop here or the ipad or whatever this ipad and uh do some videos for you guys or a little bit of uh live streaming for you before i leave because it's been like nine days since i last uploaded a video and uh i try to do you know a video a week i feel bad when i miss out on a week and so I, I try to help you guys out. I know people call me all the time and ask me questions and stuff, and that's fine too. But uh, I like to be able to give you guys an option to come on and ask me any questions you may have. But thank you, Katie, for the uh, you know good travels and everything, good wishes and all. Appreciate that. But uh, if there's any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask me. I hope you guys can hear me all right. I'm trying to talk quiet because I'm in a hotel. And it's, of course, it's New York. It's a city that never sleeps. And it's like, what time is it? It's after 11, so I don't know how late people go to bed here. It's crazy. I've never been to a city like New York. I mean, I went to D.C. I go to D.C. pretty regular. But uh, how often do you treat for bed bugs when you find them in a... Um, 
I treat the bed bugs, when I do a bed bug treatment, I use, I use Crossfire. It has a 30 day residual, so I treat once a month. I typically treat for a 90 day period, and then uh, once a month during 90 days. So you'll have three visits from me when I come to do a bed bug job. That's what I recommend to everybody else to do if they wanna try it themselves. If you're gonna use Crossfire, then you need to treat once a month for, for 90 days. Uh, you may need a fourth visit. They're finding now that bed bug eggs can last for four months without hatching, uh, where the general um, consensus was before that they could last about six to 10 days before they'd hatch. But now they, they actually are finding they can last a lot longer than a week. You know, they're actually lasting, you know, four months before they hatch. So uh, you may need to apply a fourth time or even a fifth. It just depends on the life expectancy of the eggs and how uh, if how long ago they were laid and how long they still have before they hatch. So uh, I can count though, honestly, on one hand, how many uh, bed bug jobs I've had to do past 90 days and 15 years. So it, uh, it doesn't happen very often and sometimes it does. And if it does, it, it typically is from an outside source they're being brought in. I've never had a problem where it was a chemical resistance. It's typically always because of a uh, outside source. Like the the but I had I did have a customer one time who had them in a trunk of his car, and he was continuing to bring them into the house from the trunk of his car. Uh, that was kind of irritating because we could go back and forth and back and forth and try to figure out where the bugs were coming from. But he always had his car trunk full of junk and he could never get in it. He had a, what, junk in the trunk? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and you could never treat inside the car trunk. And so uh, he got di divorced and when he got divorced, found out that the trunk is full of bed bugs. So they never knew, you know, they were continuing to bring them in the house over and over and over and had no idea they were actually living in the trunk of the car they can live in the trunk of your car. You can treat the trunk of your car. That's a big question. I actually probably should do a video on that, on uh, treating your bike vehicle. You can treat your vehicle with Crossfire. You can treat the seats, you can treat under the seats, you can treat a uh, crack and crevice inside your car, just like you do your house. And it will help kill the bed bugs in your car. I've done it, it works. Um, it, you know, treat down around your seat belts, uh, you know, any kind of hole, crevice. You know, if, you, if you've ever had bed bugs and you've ever found where they live, they like to live in the folds of mattresses and box springs and places like that. And so uh, in a car seat, they like to get down inside the seat belt where the seat belt goes into the seat, uh, where the seat folds in half. You know, treating that little crevice there all along really well. If you're worried that you may have brought them from like a school or a movie theater or something like that, they may have gotten into your car or if you've transported uh, you know, luggage or anything like that um, in your trunk, you wanna make sure you treat the trunk really well. And if you have like a hatchback, you wanna make sure you treat the whole car because you know, a hatchback is pretty open to the rest of the car. And so you wanna make sure you treat the whole car to keep them from spreading throughout your vehicle um, or bringing them back in the house. You know, if you get rid of the bed bugs in your home and they're still in your car, you're just gonna bring them back in eventually anyway. So you wanna make sure you do that. You can park your car in the middle of a parking lot this time of year because it's summer you can park your car in the middle of the parking lot where the sun gets direct sunlight in the windshield and it will heat the car up and kill the bed bugs in the car if they're in the driving compartment if you've got a trunk you're still going to need to treat the trunk because it's not going to get hot enough in the trunk to kill the bed bugs so if there's any other questions feel free to ask it's kind of late here i was just wanting to do a video real quick if you guys have anything at all don't, don't hesitate to ask anything do you have anything you want me to talk about uh, my wife's right here <laughs> oh yeah well you know that's a yeah that's a good point i forgot we were talking about that earlier um, a lot of people believe, all right, let's say you believe you have bed bugs and you go to YouTube like you are right now 
and you search through YouTube videos and you find that, oh, something so is using diatomaceous syrup, 100% successful, save money, don't hire an exterminator, buy a diatomaceous syrup, because that's like number one on the videos on, on YouTube is, you know, you can kill bed bugs for less than $3, you know, those kind of clickbait type advertising. Um, a lot of times, diatomaceous syrup kills a lot more than just bed bugs. It'll kill ants and spiders and crickets and all kinds of stuff. So you want to understand that if you treat for bed bugs and you don't have bed bugs, but you've dusted with diatomaceous syrup and your bite stopped, it very well could have been that you killed something that wasn't bed bugs at all. It could have been ants. You know, you could deter ants from coming in your house with diatomaceous syrup. It does work that way. Um, somebody just commented on my, oh, there we go, Lucille Ball. Yeah, I love your show, Lucy. Um, what would you suggest if they are in a building or a condo and you get your place treated, but they come back from other units? It is expensive to keep getting it done. That's true. Um, that's, that's rough. You know, I've, I had a customer one time who lived in a condominium in D.C. Uh, not D.C., exactly, Virginia, near Arlington. And the bed, we killed his bed bugs. I got rid of his bed bugs. Actually, after the second visit, he didn't have any bed bugs. Um, and they were coming from the bathroom. And the bathroom was across the hall from his bedroom. And so he come to find out that the neighbors had them. They didn't want to tell property management about them, so they weren't, they weren't able to get rid of them. They didn't have the money to get rid of them themselves. They couldn't afford to do anything, so they just kept them, and they were just getting bit and just trying, like, alcohol and all kinds of things on their own. And the bed bugs were just getting worse, but they were coming through the wall into his apartment. And after the third treatment, I just sat down, and I told him, I said, look, if you're going to spend this much money to rent, and then you're gonna have to spend this much money to spray for bugs. You add those two together, and if you're having to do that every month, that's how much you're paying in rent. It might be better to find a new place to rent because if your property management is not gonna take better care of you than to you know, get rid of the bugs that are everywhere, then you might wanna think about moving out, honestly. I mean, I know it's rough, moving's not easy. No, everybody you know, likes you know, most people like to just sit there and enjoy their place and not have to get keep moving all the time. But one thing I do advise if you do decide to move, that you want to treat the new place you move into before you move into it or get it checked by a bed bug dog. You know, have somebody come in and check it. Clear the property before you move in. And that way, you know the property does or does not have bed bugs you'll get a certified dog. They're like 97% accurate. They're really good. It's a good thing. Uh, they work, you know. And so I, I would definitely, you know, advise you to get a bed bug dog to go in and clear the place. You're perfectly, that's perfectly within your legal right. And, you know, if the landlord says, I don't want a dog in the property sniffing around, you haven't even paid your rent yet, that kind of would set off a red flag to me. I'd say, well, then fine, I'm not going to rent from you unless you can prove to me you don't have bed bugs. You know, can he give you documentation showing that he searched, did a search for the dog after the tenants that were in there before moved out? If he can provide you with that certification, then you know that he's genuine, he's genuine, you know? So hopefully that answered your question. I'm actually considering myself getting a bed bug dog. I've looked into it a lot, and they're uh, they're very um, very successful at finding bed bugs when you can't. I went into an apartment. Just a story off the cuff. I went into an apartment the other day. This has been probably about a week ago with my son, and uh, my son is 13, and he goes with me now. I'm 24 hour pest control, and it was in the night, and he went he rode with me to help me uh, stay awake. He was over the weekend. And uh, I like him to go with me in the evenings because he'll talk, he'll stay up all night long because he's, you know, he's a teenager and he can handle that stuff. And he'll talk to me in the car and keep me awake. So we got to this bed bug dog, it was midnight when we got to the door. And we walked in and the 
guy is just stressing out. He's got bites all up and down his arms, and he has not found a single bed bug at all. And so we walked in, and yeah, we had two exterminators that also came in. They couldn't find them either. In fact, they were saying that he didn't have bed bugs. It must have been in his head. And yet he had bites all over him. And they said, well, you must have fleas, because he had a cat. But the cat didn't have fleas, because I checked the cat when I was there. The cat didn't have fleas. So we, uh, we did a check all through the apartment and everything. I couldn't find any bed bugs. We flipped the bed up. We start treating, because he's like, I just want to treat it. Just treat it. It'll hit, set my mind at ease. If I don't have them, at least I'll feel better. So I started treating the apartment for bed bugs, and we're flipping the beds up and everything. We lay the mattress back down on the box spring, bed bug crawls out of the mattress and my son spots it and he's like well there's a bed bug right there and I'm like well they they're like that's funny because we were only there for about 15 minutes and my son is the first one that spotted it here he is 13 years old and even two professional three count me three professional exterminators couldn't find a bed bug when a 13 year old spotted it right off the bat so that just goes to show you that you know you can also have bed bugs and not find them his bed did not have blood spots. It did not have black smears from their poop. It did not, I mean, now he said when he woke up in the morning, he had some blood from the spots on his pillow from where he lays on his arm and where they were biting him. But that's the only blood he had and there was nothing to be found on the mattress at all. Because typically when you go into a bed bug job, you have your customers strip the bed. So they just, you have a bare mattress and box spring. That's all you've got. So you don't have any sheets to look at to see well the blood spots or the poop smears or anything like that you don't have any of that to see so you're just you're looking on the box springs and you're looking at the mattress and you're trying to find them there and you'll normally you can but every now and then it, it could have just been that someone downstairs had treated for them and chased them up into his apartment do you use i use a bng leroy i, I prefer bngs uh, Lucille says, what about using a steamer on everything? Now, steamers aren't a bad idea. Um, the problem with a steamer is you can't get everywhere the bed bugs live. The biggest issue that I have with a heat treatment, and this is goes along the same lines as steam, is I don't like the idea of people using it as an end-all solution, uh, going through and steaming all the cracks and crevices and and things because you still can't get in wall voids and you, you can't possibly get everywhere that the bed bugs can hide. Um, I've got a really nice steamer that my wife bought years ago. It's a really, really nice high pressure steamer and it still can't get to places that bed bugs can hide. Um, I've never really seen a professional steamer that could. And so, uh, I mean, yeah, there is a chance that you could get rid of them with a steamer not a bad idea to have a steamer just on hand for cleaning anyway and if you're going to have one it's not a bad idea to use it but they make a mess when it comes to bed bugs i have seen i have seen homes where they have used steamers to get rid of bed bugs they still have bed bugs after they use a steamer but they get it they it's they're nasty they they make a nasty mess and in, in extreme conditions where the bed bugs are really bad the steamers will splatter their poop everywhere. Um, you know, the bed bug, the dried blood and stuff from them that they excrete everywhere, um, they make a mess. And unless you're gonna go through and wipe all that and mop that stuff up, it's disgusting. I mean, I've been in homes where the smears are just running down the wall where they went in and used a steamer all up around everything. Um, what, any dust like Delta Duster Evergreen? I advise Alpine Dust. That's what I use, and it works. It's really good. It's labeled for bed bugs. You can use it in wall voids around wall outlets. And the reason I like Alpine is because of the neonicotinoids, and it works really good on bed bugs. And you can use it in your wall voids where the bed bugs retreat to. And the, the thing about Alpine, and this is where I admit to using diatomaceous earth, because Alpine is diatomaceous earth, but it's got a chemical added to it. So the bulk of it, the mass bulk of the dust that actually makes up the majority of the dust, like 99% of the dust, is diatomaceous earth that they've added alpine to. So it's not just diatomaceous earth, it's also alpine. So it's really safe. You can use it uh, even in box springs and stuff, and you can use it, it's really, really safe. 
Do you have any videos on what bed bug bug bites look like? No, I don't. And the reason I don't have any videos, B, about what bed bug uh, bites look like is because bed bug bites are different per person. Um, I've been in homes where the bed bugs were biting people and they didn't have bites. I've been in homes where the bed bugs were ferociously eating the guy and he just didn't have a mark on his body at all. And then other people who have bites that look like mosquito bites. Other people who've been bitten and they look like flea bites. You know, a bed bug, a bug bite in general, when a bug bites you, you, you get their saliva in your skin, under your, under your skin, and your body has, sends histamine to the area. It's called a histamine reaction. If you don't have a histamine reaction, which not everybody does to bug bites, then you will not swell, you won't have a mark, and with bed bugs, you won't even know they bit you at all. And so that's why I don't really have a lot of like, well, this is definitely what a bed bug bite looks like because they don't. I've been in homes where people had bites all over their arms and their legs and it wasn't bed bugs biting them. It looked like it. They looked a lot like what you'd look up on YouTube, what bu bu bed bug bites look like, but they were ants. Even people can misdiagnose by their doctor without seeing Well, like my wife, she, she's allergic to carpet beetles. She had bites all down her arm where it looked like bug bites, but she was having an allergic reaction to carpet beetle, the, the hairs on the carpet beetles. So just because it looked like she had bites, she didn't even have bites at all. She just had a rash on her arm. Um, but it was like a little spot here and a little spot there. It looked like bed bugs, but it wasn't bed bugs. So that's why I don't, I don't really dwell a lot on what the bites look like because that differs from person to person. That's like, I've never been able to understand how a doctor can diagnose a bug bite because every single person is gonna react differently to a bug bite. And like my daughter, just just happened just a couple days ago. My daughter gets bit by mosquitoes. Awful, I do too, awful. She swells up. She's got these little quarter sized spots on her arms and her legs where she gets bitten up by mosquitoes. It's time for mosquitoes. Everybody, you know, if you go outside and play, you're a little kid. You're gonna get eaten up by mosquitoes. And she's got these little spots and they swell up like a quarter on her arms and her legs. Uh, when my wife gets bit by mosquitoes, they look like, like little bitty, teeny tiny BBs. I mean, they don't look anything like what my daughter gets bit. So that's why that a flea bite would be like, like yeah, like yeah, right. But a flea bite looks like painful. So, you know, understand that you can't really diagnose bites. You know, you can't say, now, if you get bit by a spider and it burns, which is typical of a spider bite, and then you start developing that flesh-eating bacteria in your, in your skin and you'll start losing skin and stuff, that's typically a brown recluse because that's what a brown recluse does. If you get bit and you start developing nervous problems like upset stomach, diarrhea, um, seizures, I mean, really, I mean, like nerve pain, that's typically a black widow bite if it's a poisonous bite. So just to give you an idea, that's what, that's what happens with those bites. They're pretty easy to diagnose. Doctors are really good at diagnosing spider bites because they know how the venom reacts per person. But when it comes to like a, a mosquito bite or a bed bug bite or ant bite, that's completely different or a bee sting even. That's still, that's completely different because um, like a, not necessarily a bee sting, but when you get bit, you can be bit by a yellow jacket. You can get stung by a yellow jacket. You can get bit by a yellow jacket because they bite and sting. And it's possible to get bit and never die, get sting and have a reaction like you would with a, with a mosquito bite. It hurts, but there's no venom. So now when you get venom from a bee sting, they can find that. They know what you got stung by. But when, uh, but when you get bit by a bed bug, they can't tell you got bit by a bed bug. They're just trying to tell you, oh yeah, it could be, you know, oh, it might be, you know. And then that just makes you even crazier because you think you got bed bugs in your house when really you may not have bed bugs at all. So I talk a lot. I, I said a whole lot to say a little. I said a whole lot. That's one of the biggest complaints I have on my YouTube channel. If you go through and you read them, people will say, I wish you'd get to the point you talk too much, so. Um, but anyway, 
I've been on for about a half hour. I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. If there's any questions anybody else has that don't hesitate to, uh, you have one a one question. question. I would you add want. one more thing. Well, just because, okay, that what is it, the great bumblebee butterfly to the, um, oh, that bumblebee that got, and it has to be endangered species, yeah. Yeah, so, and they're neonicotinoids, they're like a neonicotinoids because they're crossed from alpine lines. Yeah, right. So the stress that yeah, she's people pregnant. follow <laughs> their labels because they weren't allowed to use Hawaiian flag. That's not true. Isn't it? No, that's not no, true. No, it's not. No, no, you're mistaken. Well, well, then why is it... You're mistaken. You can't, you can't apply crossfire anymore? You can't, no. Okay, you cannot apply crossfire outside. Right. But you can apply alpine outside. You can. Yes. That's why they're blaming, they're blaming neonicotinoids for the downfall of those bees because people are misapplying them misapplying outside. outside. Yeah. So she was, it had been in the news, Facebook or the news lately. There's a honeybee that has been put to the endangered species list. Um, they're blaming neonicotinoid family of pesticides. Crossfire is a neonicotinoid. Alpine is a neonicotinoid. There's a lot, imidacloprid is a neonicotinoid. More than likely it's misuse of imidacloprid because it's been around a long time. But um, the only way that you're gonna poison a honeybee is if you misapply the chemical because the label on all neonicotinoids, it's required on the label to state that it cannot be applied near any flowering plants in order to keep it from coming into contact with honeybees because honeybees pollinate flowers. So people are obviously misapplying the chemical. Oh, and thank you. Oh, so just so you know, my wife's pregnant. She's 22 weeks pregnant. We think it's a boy. We did a DNA test for people that people have been asking about. Uh -huh. So that's why I'm bringing it up. We're going on a cruise because when we get off the cruise, we'll be, she'll be 23 and a half weeks pregnant and the cutoff is 24 weeks. So they will not let her go on a cruise after she's 24 weeks pregnant. It was our five-year anniversary last month, and so for her anniversary, we're going on a cruise before, well, our, our anniversary, our wedding anniversary, we're going on a cruise to Bermuda, so that's where we're going, and I'm going to be gone for like a week, and my whole business is shutting down for a week, and, but that's what I got to do, so if anybody calls to ask me any questions, you're going to get my son, and he'll probably write a note down, and I'll call you when I get back, because people do, people do call me all the time, so. Yeah, I'm trying to do something nice for my wife before we before we have this baby. And my daughter just turned five, so my uh, my son he's he's 13, she's five. They're with my in-laws, uh, so they're being babysat so that we can have a. We never had a honeymoon, so we're gonna go and I guess have a honeymoon in the in Bermuda. So <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be fun. I've already gotten some videos filmed on the subway. I noticed when I got on the subway or metro that between the seats there were places that bed bugs but, but I got out my camera and I started filming a couple of things so hopefully I can patch together some how to you know on traveling how to keep bed bugs from getting on you because a lot of people would never think that they would be on the metro but we were on the metro for 40 minutes and so if you're on the metro for 40 minutes, you could easily transfer a bed bug from your pocket onto a seat and someone could pick that up and take it home with them. So I showed a couple things on, you know, what to look for in case you were to travel the metro or a subway type environment or even a city bus is the same thing if you're on a city bus or a uh, Greyhound, which we took Greyhound up north. But um, if you're on a Greyhound bus or anything, you look in the same exact spot. So I'm hoping that that'll help people. Uh, being able to spot them when they're going places, you know, on adventures like we're on right now. So, anyway, I'm going to head on to bed. It's late. I got to get up early because I got to get on this boat and get seasick. Uh, I do have Facebook. I'm, I do have Facebook on the boat, and I'm going to, uh, yeah, I agree with you, Lucille, if you can keep from sitting next to people, especially people you don't know. Oh, I'll tell you what happened, too. I'm going I'm to tell you this, too. This is a good one. 
All right. I had a customer. I've known this lady for for years. Really nice lady. Um, she calls me whenever she has a question. So she called me the other day, freaking out. She's like, look, what she does for a living is she, she's one of those, you know those people, they'll go and they'll pick up the elderly from their, um, like they'll take them to do their shopping or they'll take them to like, uh, you know, the doctor's office or something like that. And so she picked up the lady at her house. Well, actually it wasn't a woman, it was a man. She picked up the guy. Yeah, well, kind of like a caregiver, D, but not, not really. She just kind of busts like him around. Like a taxi driver. Yeah, yeah, like a taxi driver, but for elderly people. So she'll actually get out, help them in the car, put their wheelchairs in the trunk and stuff like that for them. And their walkers and things like that. Well, she got out. And this guy, she said, he's probably like 86. And she gets him and she gets out to help him to get in the car and he's got like 18 bed bugs crawling all over his shirt. And she's freaking out. And so she called me and she's like, what do I do? What do I do? Do I let this guy in my car? And I said, no, don't let him in your car. I said, <laughs> I said all right, let's say you let him in your car, hypothetically. You let this guy in the car. The bed bugs transfer to your car. Then you go pick up the next, because she had three more jobs, three more people she had to transport that day. So if she were to go pick up the next person, that person gets bed bugs her company gets sued because they take bed bugs home and it's the fault of her company because she let that guy in the car you know so she didn't let him in the car and they had to send a special car just for him and they had to treat the car and everything because he still was paying them to transport him it's a contract and so they still had to go pick him up but they treated the whole car and everything so taxi cabs and those types of cars, I was I was a little scared today because we had to take a taxi from where we got off at the station where the bus came in to our hotel. I was a little leery about getting in a taxi cab after I had that phone call conversation. It was not even seven days ago. And I'm kind of sitting there and I'm like looking down and checking around my butt and stuff while I'm sitting on the seat making sure I'm not got bugs crawling in my pockets because I you know people my my father-in-law thinks I'm crazy but I will tell you right now when you've grown up in pest control for 30 years you really start checking everything because you don't want to you don't want the kind of bug problems that I've seen people have you know, I know how bad it can get. I know what it looks like when people get really severe bug problems. And I don't want that in my house. So, anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, if, you, if you do want to get in touch with me, we do have Facebook on the cruise. I will be checking my business Facebook page, which is Green Acres Pest Control LLC. And I will be answering questions there when I get a chance. Um, so if you do have, you know, any questions you want to ask me, don't hesitate. I don't mind asking, answering questions. I'm just going to be relaxing on a cruise ship anyway, so I won't have nothing to do but sit there and do nothing, twiddle my thumbs. But, um, so if you guys want to send me any kind of questions, feel free to do it. You can also tweet me at Green Acres PC. I think I got some bug pictures coming up. Somebody had asked me on one of my YouTube videos if I could identify a bug. Anytime you need a bug identified, I like to see pictures. I can figure out what it is. Most of the time, I can figure it out what it is. So, uh, you guys have a really great evening. I appreciate it. Uh, like the video, share it, subscribe. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And let me see if I can find out how to turn this thing off because I still don't get this whole iPad thing. <laughs>